So it's been a while since I've made one of these, mainly because I'm pretty busy. And um, with schoolwork, as well as the speech therapy that I've been going to really often. And so I was in um, one of my appointments today, and uh, my, speech, my speech therapist was gonna was about to make me do this sort of mundane, repetitive task. And like every time he makes me do those, I get annoyed. And I don't, and I've never told him like I really don't think these are helping. Can we do something else? So I did that today, and only not quite that mean. I just said, um, like, I don't think those are helping me transfer any of these techniques out in the real world, because, like, what he, like, because what he makes me do, it's not psychologically hard for me at all, like, it doesn't have any of those cues that come up in the real world that make me stutter, make me stutter, that's why I believe happens, but whatever. Um, like so I'm just sitting in a in a room with a guy that I know that I can speak well with if I and and I'm just reading words off a page which is already normally easy for, easier for me so I was just like I don't really think it's gonna help and we talked about it and he tried to convince me like well yeah well you need the foundation of this to, to, in order to be able to do that out there and maybe we don't have that yet and I was like, yeah, but that's just, it's just too much of an easy situation. I need something that's still easy, but not like, like that's, like that was something that's elementary school while I'm, well, I'm past that. I'm pretty sure that I'm in junior high. I could have gave a little bit closer of an analogy, but whatever. So I'm not in junior high. I'm in college. But anyway, um, and... And like our main problem right now is that I speak really well in the therapy sessions, but then when I go out into the real world, it's really hit and miss. I'm either speaking really well and it's almost like nothing, or I'm just back to my old patterns and it's hard. So, um, like I don't have a gray area and I was like, well, I'm not really a gray person. I'm either black or white. It's just sort of what I am. I like. I can make decisions really easily. I know, uh, I know what I want. I'm just sort of that kind of person. And he was like, "Yeah, well, you need some gray." Anyway, so we talked about it, and well, I was really proud that I just brought that up to begin with, because I feel like a lot of people they just sort of blindly follow, and or in even if you know like this isn't helping, I don't think this is maybe what we should be doing, like, it's just better to bring that up and say, you know, I'm not, I'm obviously not an expert, but I don't think this is really what's going to help me out in the, in the end. Or like, any kind of situation where you know you deserve more, why do you just sit around and let people treat you the way they do? Otherwise, I mean, you can try saying something, let that mull over. If that doesn't work, then just get out, right? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I was really proud of that. Because, and like after we talked it out, we sort of saw that like we weren't really on the same page with some stuff. Like he thought I was maybe a bit more comfortable with my star than what I actually am. Because while I will, um, openly tell people that I stutter. I mean, it's mainly because it's so obvious if I don't acknowledge it, it's like, it's, like, it's just major denial, and I'm not that much in denial. I know that I stutter, and, and I also know that people know that I stutter. But I think he thought that I was a lot less emotionally involved, like, in it, I guess. Like, uh, I don't know, there are, I mean, I don't know, like, I've cried in these sessions before. It's because I get so frustrated. There are a lot of times I just gotta, like, repeat things in my head so that I don't start crying. And they're normally really mean things, but it works. Um, I don't know, which, he, I don't think he got that. 
because another one of his big things is that you need to be able to produce a pseudo stutter so that you can, which is pretty much something that is as close to a real stutter of yours as you can get so you can learn to get out of them. And I can't do those. I don't know, like, we have tried for months now and I just can't make them happen. Like, it's probably because I hate it so much, why would I want to make it happen voluntarily? So that's our main issue, currently. Well, and uh, I just really need to learn how to do that. But I'm pretty sure that the reason why I can't, because, oh, because he said that that is a real anomaly, anonymously, anonymous, rare for him, because, like, he's never had someone who can't produce those. And while I'm really glad that I'm special, I need this to not be an issue, and we need to work past this, because it's not helping me. I'm gonna practice a lot more trying to make those until our next appointment, but um, we also need to think of ways that will still help me without being, being able to do that. Because I'm pretty sure, I don't know, like my stutters, when they're, like my intense stutters that I can't get out of, they are very tense, like my head shakes, I'm like practically convulsed. Convulsing. I mean, I'm not, but it's really gross. And that's, see, it's really gross. Like, I don't want to make that happen on a voluntar voluntary basis. But. So, it was nice because this week, instead of me having a lot of homework, he got homework. Which I think is, is healthy. You need to challenge yourself, like... Like, I'm a little bit of a different case for him. Like, he's been doing this for 20 years, and yet I'm sort of, like, giving him situations that he's never seen before. So he needs to um, exercise his mental muscle so he can maybe help me out here. And I am all about exercising mental muscles. Well, really any kind of muscle, but especially the mental muscle. Okay, your brain. I don't know why I was saying it like that. 